Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom and the Kitty. Want to say hi? No, this guy doesn't like to talk much. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to have a look at what I am doing for my uh, NAS drive. Uh, I know I've mentioned this a couple times and um, somebody had asked a question about uh, when I did my videos on OpenELEC. And what I'm going to do is come over here and uh, load up Cody here, uh, which there's actually something playing on. And let me uh, push my escape key, and you'll be able to get back to back to that. I think one more escape. So here you can see I'm running Cody on the on the computer back behind me there, uh, which you probably can't see much on. But um, here is. Um, the thing about this is that I do not actually have any of these files on the actual computers and that goes for almost all of the computers that are uh, that are in my office. Uh, I pretty much stopped putting files. Last year I stopped putting all the media files on on the various computers um, outside of a few files here and there. Um, so what I did though is uh, about a year ago is I built a NAS drive and the NAS drive is a network accessible storage system and that will actually allow me to store all of my various um, uh, various files and allow me access to them from any device in the house on the network or if I am leaving the house for a while I can actually plug in a VPN and when I plug in that VPN then I can actually access anything on my NAS drive from any of my devices that is hooked up on the VPN itself. So. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through my setup and first I'm going to show you the software and then I'm going to shut it down and I'll actually pull out the hardware and I'll show you how I built it. Um, and it's this, this is really nothing uh, special. Uh, we're going to transition over here. Um, so what we're looking at is the Open Media Vault platform. So you can just download this and I'm not sure exactly what the URL is, um, but it's, you know, just type in a, a search, internet search for Open Media Vault and you will find this. And I use the Open Media Vault platform because it's one of the, it's, it's the top rated NAS system. Yeah, go ahead, Kitty. It is the top rated NAS system that is based on Debian. And uh, that was important to me as I built this because I really didn't want to mess with learn, uh, messing with any other Linux platforms and I wanted to stick with something um, in the Debian family. There are a few different platforms that you can use and these are uh, specialized Linux distros. So it comes with a web server and that's what we're looking at here is uh, I'm actually on Firefox and I've just uh, full screened the Firefox. I got cat hair like. That cat, the problem with that cat is that thing sheds like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> so, a cat here all over the place now. Um, so, I have this, this set up, and I've used a lot of the basic default settings. Um, but uh, I'm just to show you, show you how this works, you can just come in, and, and everything's pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, your date and time settings here. And uh, you can set up all these, um, which I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure they're right, but uh, that's actually quite okay with me. Uh, the network is, um, you know, the, I have my host name and my local over there. So if you're on my internal uh, network, you can access it on Open Media Vault. And then I have notifications disabled, but I can actually turn on various notifications and have email things sent to me. Um, I don't generally manage with that. And then over here, the power button on the computer does a shutdown. This is kind of an important setting to work. Um, although I have noticed that uh, this actually does not really, um, it doesn't actually work most of the time. I usually find myself having to come in here and turn the system off manually um, through through the system. My power button just doesn't always, always work for me. Um, we do have the ability to do some monitoring, uh, which I don't generally do with mine. I can install certificates. Again, I don't bother. You know, this is essentially just used on my own computers. I don't have any outside access to this. Um, and so I just deal with the security exceptions and, and not worry about it. You can do scheduled jobs. Um, there are a lot of updates. Uh, in fact, I probably should run updates on the system. I'm just afraid of breaking it. Although I'm not sure why. I actually have a, a full backup of this. Um, but you do have the option there. There are a lot of plugins, uh, a lot of neat plugins, and some of them work, some of them don't. Um, I know I tried to install, the, they used to have an own cloud plugin in here. I'm not sure if it's still here. Um, I tried to install that once and it crashed my system, so I have to manually install own cloud on this. 
um, whenever I, I get to it. I, I haven't uh, worried about it. But you can see that there are a lot of things here. This is a repository manager, so I can turn on the extras and turn on, turn off various items. Um, so um, that's essentially walking through the basic settings. As far as my storage is concerned, um, I actually run two laptop hard drives in the system. And they are set up as a RAID 0, so they are a mirror image of each other. And so if one drive fails, I have a backup of the other. And I also have a plug-in here that if I take this external hard drive and simply plug it into a USB drive on the front of the computer, um, then it will actually make a copy of whatever's on those, um, on those drives here. So I'll have three redundant backups of all of the data on the system. All right, and then the last drive here, um, this is actually the operating system. The, the Cruiser uh, disk here is actually the operating system. Um, here is your Smart, which uh, gives us uh, information on, on how the disks are doing. Um, and then the RAID management is how we set this up. So you can set up a RAID management uh, to, uh, you can set these up for speed, you can set them up for security. Of course, the problem with setting up for speed is if one drive dies, everything got, dies. Um, and the way I have it set up, it's not necessarily for speed, but what it is set up for is uh, to make redundant copies because this is where I store my pictures. So I store my music files. I store, you know, the important documents that I have are, are stored on here. And so I want to make sure that it was uh, backed up for, for safety. Um, here's your basic file systems. Um, so you can see that uh, um, I actually still have... Um, uh, What's it? 600 gigabytes free here, um, and this is of my um, uh, of my RAID system. This these guys here are actually from the old hard drive that I had. I could probably just delete these out of there, uh, which I'm not going to bother doing now, but I could. Um, but this guy here, um, you'll see that that the RAID system, although it is two disks, it reports as only one because I do have it as a um, uh, as that uh, duplicate file system. And then as far as users are concerned, you can set up your various users. Um, you can give them their own separate email accounts. In this case, I just used the same one. I just blocked my email out. Um, and I have a different users so that depending on which one of the folders I'm going into will have their own separate logins. It's just an extra level of security. Um, and then here is the shared folders. So the idea is you go into the system and you add these various shared folders. And then these are the folders that allow you to get into them. So uh, my admin is actually a, a catch-all if I'm having problems getting into one folder or I forget a password for one of the subfolders. I can actually log into the admin with a different password and access all of the folders from here. But the Christian video will cover um, any of the videos that I have um, from you know Christian DVDs. Um, I have documents, which is just a backup of all my, my document files. Music is obviously the music. Pictures is the pictures. Sermons is I have a, a 30 gigabyte sermon archive that I've been collecting back since, I don't know, like 2004 or something. Uh, so I have a, uh, those all in their own separate section. And then video for any video files I have. So there's uh, services as well. So there's a um, DLNA, which allows you to automatically... Um, um, automatically access things. So in this case, if I just have, uh, let's see, if I have my other smartphone. Okay. This guy here is the one I, I generally, you know, this is my business phone, so I don't have as many quibbles about showing you the screen here. Um, so this guy here, uh, for example, if I just go into VLC and I come over here, and of course I'm totally not on the home screen right now, so let me get back to the home screen. Okay, so if I come over to the home screen here, uh, let me uh, transition my size back here. Okay, so if I go into my home screen here and I hit my local network, um, it'll actually show me all the various things that it finds on the network. And one of those is at the very bottom is the DLNA. So you can do this and then this will actually browse any of the folders, any of the, um, uh, any of the archives that I have. So I can come over here and I can search by music, all music, various artists. So I can come over here and I can click in and I can actually play any song right here. So that actually is how this works. 
that any device, any of my tablets, any of my phones, anywhere in the network, as long as I'm attached to my home network, I can access and stream videos, music, whatever else from my NAS drive onto my own personal devices from anywhere in the house. So the DLAN allows you to do this uh, without, uh, without having to mess with a whole lot of other settings. Um, there is a FTP setting, which I have disabled. Um, I don't really need to FTP stuff into here. Um, so you can see that there's a lot of different systems here that I have disabled. Um, the, I, what I do have enabled is the Samba server here. And this guy kind of controls my whole Samba server in, in the house. And so uh, all of my access uh, between the different computers um, kind of starts there. And let's see, I have SSH, which I have disabled right now. Uh, and then the USB backup is actually what allows me to uh, make a backup. So you can see it's sharing admin, which if you remember was the folder that controlled all of the folders. So as soon as I plug this guy in, it would automatically run and create the USB backup. So anytime I do uh, file uploads, um, then I'll go ahead and uh, plug that guy in. So there's other information in here. Um, so this is, I mean, this is how, how the software works. And um, platform's really easy. You just do a, an internet search for Open Media Vault. And uh, when you have that set up, then um, what you can end up doing is uh, just play with all the settings. It takes, I'd probably say, about an hour or so to install everything. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shut the system down and um, for if I can get my camera plugged in right, oh come on, there we go, um, for your viewing pleasure while I'm getting the computer set up, here's some kitties you can look at. <laughs> Of course, the kitty's being a little rude. He's not realizing he's over there looking himself on the camera. Um, of course, let me go ahead and transition over so you can see the kitties in full screen. Hi, kitty, kitty. Hi. There's both kitties. Aren't they cute? All right, so I'm actually going to, I have to come up into the main system, and I'm going to shut the system down, and then I'm going to pull the guy out, and then I'm going to show you the details about how it works. Of course, this is going to totally mess up my computer over uh, here because... <laughs> I was in the middle of streaming something. So it's going to give me a big old error, but that's quite okay. All right. So actually, the, where the cat's bed is there, um, that's actually just two plastic tables. And underneath that, uh, I have two printers. Uh, like a, I have a, a laser printer, I have a scanner, and actually the NAS drive sits down there. Um, so um, what we're going to do now is, well, you guys are looking at the cats, and the cats are going to look at me all strange-like um, because I'm actually going to pull a computer server out there, and I'll show you how this guy is built. So just enjoy the kitties for a few minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, and we are back. So, this NAS drive was actually built on a micro tower. And this was an open box special. I paid $200 for the tower. And uh, as I said, the actual operating system runs off of this little thumb drive right here. So that is my operating system. And then I actually did a little bit of modification in here because these micro towers actually only hold one hard drive. And so what I did, of course, that is a uh, three and a half inch hard drive. And so to make this guy work, what I did, um, they do have CD-ROMs. So I took out, okay, I'll come over here, come over here. So what I did here, and let me grab my dowel rod for pointing out stuff. And let me 
move some of that up so I can raise the mic and talk a little bit better. Okay, so what I did here is um, these guys have a CD-ROM and a two and a half inch hard drive. And I think I just dropped a screw down there. Oh, well, I'll find it later. Oh, no, there it is. And so what I did is I just utilized the um, the SATA port for the uh, CD-ROM. So the CD-ROM is still in here, but it's not actually uh, hooked up to anything. It's mostly in there just because there'd be a hole in the front of the case if it if it was uh, was not. And then what I did is I purchased uh, from Amazon. They were probably like five or ten dollars. I don't remember, but. It was a slot that would allow me to um, convert my two hard drives here uh, into the space of one uh, two and a half inch drive. So I have two small laptop hard drives. These are one terabyte each, and they're a HGST hard drives. Uh, probably not the best, but I only paid like, I don't know, 50 bucks for them or something. Um, also hanging out down here is dangling. I have uh, disabled the... Uh, wireless card because I don't want there to be any weird crazy potential that somebody might hack the system and so I took the wireless card completely out just uh, for that so the only way to access this is with the um, uh, the LAN port on the side these guys are not particularly good systems um, but it does a great job for the NAS drive um, it actually um, uh, never really peeks out I, I do have status monitors uh, um, on the other systems so I did also have to purchase a splitter because the power source on here comes with enough the power to plug to power one hard drive and one CD drive here. And so what I did is I purchased this guy as well online for, I don't know, a couple dollars. And it allowed me to split my single power for the hard drive into a double power for the hard drive. So this then allowed me to put um, plug both hard drives in. Of course, um, one of these guys got unplugged because whatever. So I'm gonna plug that guy right back in. They both come up back online again. Oh. Of course, it does help if I plug it in the right way. Okay. The clip on that is not actually working. I have no idea why. Hmm, not sure. Anyway, clip on that's not working. Um, so basically, uh, this guy just plugs right back in here. And it's this doesn't form a super tight fit, but it's tight enough that it doesn't actually go anywhere once I mount, uh, mount the drive in here. So that is essentially how I have this guy built. It is... Um, uh, it works great. I don't have any issues at all. Um, and again, I paid... You know, very little for this. This was a this was a platform that actually only cost me. You know, like I said, I bought the computers for two hundred. I bought the um, let's see, computers for two hundred. The extra cables were an, only an extra a hundred or so, and I'm having a hard time getting this guy back in. I might just have to do it when I'm uh, when I'm not not on the video. Let me see if this makes a difference. Yeah, I think that's what I had to do. Yep, that's what I had to do. Okay. And then I just need to make sure that this guy's plugged in right down here. And then remount this with its mounting screws, which are right here. And then I just need to plug this guy right back into the wall. So that's the NAS drive. Um, took me, you know, only about an hour or so to install the, the software. Um, again, we're just running this off of, um, I don't even know if this is a USB 2 or USB 3. Um, it's one of these little SanDisk cruiser drives. I actually think these are USB 2 drives, uh, but it seems to work just fine. Uh, SanDisk drives, USB 2 seems to work okay. Uh, it's if you use uh, the PNY USB 2s do not seem to work well. I'm not sure why that wire there is all of a sudden loose. That's a little concerning to me that, that uh, how loose this wire is. Um, okay. Well, anyway. So there's the drive. Um, 
basically if you could purchase a uh, you could purchase a NAS drive and it actually is uh, a little bit more money than than one of these types of systems is uh, where'd the bottom of that go uh, I want to say when I was pricing out actual NAS drives, they would be somewhere around the th uh, three or four hundred dollar range for what I wanted. And of course, a lot of them had proprietary software. I had no idea what they were doing. Uh, this guy here is just a just a basic Linux distro. Download it online, and uh, you can run it and install it. And uh, it's nice and easy. And of course, these computers don't take a lot of power. They're not powerful. I wouldn't use these for for much more than. Maybe simple, like, I mean, this had Windows 10 initially. Um, you'd have simple Windows installation just for email and very simple web browsing stuff. But this is a great application to buy a cheap open box $200 computer that you can turn into an NAS drive with just about another $100. Bucks. Um, so that is how this system works. And this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.